You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Listen, I'm so happy to have you with us today. I'm teaching on leadership. This is my leadership edition, and leadership is a journey. Not a destination, not an event, but a journey. And I'm so excited about the opportunity to take this journey with you. Listen, I believe that God has called me and anointed me to help you grow in your leadership. And I believe this lesson that we prepare for you is going to be a blessing for you. So please let someone know that we're on and share these podcasts with others. I believe it will bless others as well. Now, I began a five-episode series entitled Confident or Insecure, what kind of leader are you? Confident or insecure? Are you a confident leader or you're an insecure leader? This is our fifth lesson. Now, there's a general theme that has run through the entire series, and that theme is leading with confidence. Leading with confidence. And this is our fifth and final lesson. Now, I trust that you have been blessed. I know I have. I've heard from others that they're being blessed. So I want you to go back. If this is your first uh, episode that you have uh, listened to, then I want you to go back to the prior uh, lessons episodes, and I believe it's going to be a blessing for you. And then if you did listen, it's repetition is the key to learning. So it'll do you good to go back and listen again. Now, in this uh, fifth and final uh, episode, I want to talk from the subtopic, overcoming our insecurities, overcoming our insecurities. Now, I've had to overcome insecurities in my life. Often, we are impacted in a negative way by different factors as we're growing up. And for the most part, most of us have insecurities, but we can overcome them. And I'm excited about sharing with you uh, how to overcome uh, some of your insecurities, all, all of your insecurities. Now, Jesus uh, told a parable in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. He told a parable. It's also recorded in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. But in Matthew 7, he says, Whoever hears my sayings, and does them. He says he's like unto a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat on beat it on that house, beat on that house that was uh, built on a rock. And the Bible says it could not shake the house. It was built on a rock. It did not fall. On the other hand, he says, whoever hears my sayings and does not do them is likened unto a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So we have a wise man who builds his house on the rock and a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the same storm came. The rain descended, the floods came, and the wind beat upon that house, 
and it fell immediately. And one translation says, great was the fall of it. So we have here in this parable two foundations. We have a rock foundation and we have a sand foundation. Now, I'm taking this parable and I'm injecting it into the issue of overcoming our insecurities. You see, the world has a way to be secure and God has a way to be secure. So the world's way of security is like building your life on sand. God's way of security is like building your life on a rock. So let's talk about the world's way of security. Now, remember, we said that to be insecure is to be unsure, uncertain. It means to be have self-doubt about one's ability or one's identity. It means a sense of inadequacy. So when we talk about security, it's the converse. Security is to feel certain, to feel sure, to be comfortable and knowledgeable about your and embrace your abilities. No self-doubt concerning your uh, identity. No sense of inadequacy. And the world has a way that it offers security. And I'm saying that it is building your life on sand. Security in the world is achieved primarily three ways. Number one, by what we can do. Security is achieved, number one, by what we can do. What we can do has to do with performance. In other words, our efforts and our works. Our efforts and our works. Performance, what we can do. The world security is achieved, secondly, by what we have. What we have has to do with our possessions, has to do with our, the things that we own or the things that we possess. And then thirdly, a security is achieved in the world by what others think of us what others think of us. That's prestige. Or we could say admiration, uh, appearance. So we have what I call a sand foundation. If your security your sense of well-being, your sense of certainty, your, your sense of identity, your, your sense of, of, of adequacy, if it's built on these three things, I'm saying that it's built on the sand. If it's built on what we can do, performance, work, efforts, what if our performance is not just in a positive light? What if others uh, evaluate us and say that we're not performing up to par, whether it be on our jobs, whether it be in competition, whether it be in relationships, what if my security in my relationship is built purely on performance? What if my relationship with God is built purely on my performance and my works? And what if I come up short in my works? I come up short in my efforts. And because my security is built on my performance, then I'm not going to feel very good about myself. I'm going to be full of self-doubt, 
I'm going to feel inadequate. I'm going to feel all these things because my security was built on performance, my works, my efforts. On the other hand, if my security is built on what I have, my possessions, things, what if I'm an individual who doesn't have a lot of possessions, doesn't have a lot of things, then I'm not going to feel good about myself. I'm going to feel inadequate, insecure, all these things, because my security was built on possessions, things. What if I have possessions, have things, what if I have a great job? What if I have a wonderful home? What if I have uh, expensive items or clothes or whatever? And for whatever reason, I lose those things. What if I lose my jewelry and lose my home and lose my car? For whatever reason, then I am going to not have security because my security was built off those things. And then finally, what what if I build my security on what others think of me and others no longer think highly of me? Others, in fact, have a low opinion of me. What if at one time I was admired, but for whatever reason, I'm no longer admired by people? And think about the society that we live in. We, we live in a social media-influenced society. We're influenced by how many friends we have, how many likes we get. Think about how, what if folk don't want to be our friends anymore? What if they unfollow us? What if they ghost us? Think about it. Think about how much admiration we get from the number of followers and the number of likes. I'm not saying these things are wrong. I want you to like my podcast, and I want you to let me know that you like my podcast. Okay? I want you to share it with others. I want to reach as many people, but my security can't be your security can't be based off likes and how many people follow you. Because if they unfollow you and they put a post where they don't like something you said and your security was based on what others think about you, and if your appearance caused them to admire you, but for whatever lit reason, your appearance change, maybe through an accident or maybe through aging, and you no longer have that appearance and folk no longer admire you because really uh, what others think has to do with prestige and it has to do with admiration and in some cases has to do with appearance. So if, think about it, think about it, you were absolutely um, a beautiful model in your, uh, your young age. But now in your 60s or 50s or 70s, you no longer look like that. And all your security was based on what others think about you, the prestige of what others think. They thought you were a top model. And for whatever reason, you're not that anymore. Think about if you were the person who had millions of followers and for whatever reason, people are no longer following you. Think about how that would impact your sense of well-being, your sense of self-esteem, your security. In fact, Satan, one of the main tools that Satan uses to abort and hinder us from fulfilling our destiny is that he wants us to build our security on sand. 
He wants us to build it on what we can do, performance. He wants us to build it on what we have, possessions. He wants us to build our security on what others think of us, all sin. And he tempted Jesus the same way. He tempted Jesus with these three areas. He wanted Jesus to build his security on the sand. So in Matthew 4, verse 1 through 11, we have a recording of the wilderness temptation. And there are three temptations that Satan tempted Jesus with. He said to Jesus, after fasting for many days, he said, turn the stone into to bread. Aren't you hungry? Turn stone into bread. In other words, perform. Perform, do something, works. Get yourself out of this by your works, your efforts, performance. Turn the stone into bread. And when that didn't work, he said, now listen, if you'll bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Possessions. Notice he said, I'll give you possessions if you bow down to me. And when that didn't work, he said, now, God, I'm going to take you to the top of the temple and I want you to throw yourself down. And the scripture says the angels will catch you. Everyone will see you coming down in midair. They'll see the angels coming and, and they're, the angels will catch you in front of everybody and they will admire you. They will Think your special prestige, what others think about you. And Jesus knew these three areas, performance, possessions, and prestige, are sand foundations, building your security on the sand. On the other hand, God has a way to build our security. And the scripture says when we build our security on God's way, it's building our life on a rock. Nothing can come in and, and snatch our sense of well-being. Nothing can destroy our identity. Nothing can cause us to feel inadequate when we build our security and uh, on a rock. And I, I've shared my testimony about how I had a, a problem with rejection growing up. I had a problem with rejection even as a young married uh, husband. I had an unresolved issue of rejection. And that produced in me a very insecure person. I was, I was insecure. Because I had based my security on performance. I had based my security on what I had or possessed things, didn't have a lot of things. And then I had based my, uh, I based my well-being and my security on what others thought of me. And so I was really a shaken and a sand foundation. You're not stable. Because people don't always feel good about you. And when I went into ministry and some people liked what I was teaching, other people did. And some people thought I was a wonderful person. Other people thought I was not wonderful. And so, you know, I was very unstable. Didn't have a lot of positions, struggling financially, materially. So I'm unstable. You know what I mean? You know, young pastor and nobody's coming, really, church not growing. So my efforts are not producing anything. So I didn't feel very uh, stable. I didn't feel good about myself because my security was not, was based on the wrong thing. So I'm asking you, is your security based on the wrong things? Is your security based on your performance? based on your possessions? Is it based on prestige, admiration, what people think about you, appearance? Is your security based on these things? Then if so, then you probably like I was. 
just very unstable. Sometimes I felt good. Sometimes I felt bad. Sometimes I was up. Sometimes I was down. A very unstable life. Very unstable life. And insecure people are very unstable. Very unstable. Why? Their security is based on the wrong thing. So the rest of the way, I want to share with you how God delivered me from rejection, how he will deliver you from other forms of insecurity, because security manifests itself in so many different ways. Depression, discouragement, a feeling like a failure, all those things, you know, nobody loves me. You know what? It manifests, insecurity manifests itself in different ways. So God's way, and, and this is something that I learned uh, and I practiced and broke uh, rejection over my life. God's security, the believer's security, is based on three primary things, three primary things. And in this part, I'm going to give you what the, uh, the what security is, should be built on, and then I'm going to give you a proof text. I'm going to give you a scripture from the Bible. I'm going to read it, the scripture to you, and I want you to go back, and I want you to meditate on these scriptures. So God's way to security is a rock foundation, and the believer's security is built on and should be built on Number one c comes from knowing that you're accepted by God. Your security should come from built on knowing that you are accepted by God. You won't be accepted by everybody, but you're accepted by God. There will be some people that may reject you, but you're accepted by God. Bible said Jesus was a man of he, he was a man of sorrow, had all kinds of rejections from family, he had rejection from religious leaders, and in some cases he had reject a rejection from followers. But he was very secure because his security came from knowing that he was accepted by God. Our proof text for that is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. In the New King James Version, it says, to the praise of the glory of His grace, God's grace, by which He made us accepted in the beloved. If you are a believer, if you're a Christian, if you've invited Jesus Christ into your life, the scripture, Ephesians 1, 6, said that you're accepted in the beloved. You're accepted in Christ. God accepts you. He accepts you, not because of your performance, not because of what you can do. He accepts you not because of your possessions, not because of what you have. He accepts you not because of what other people think about you, prestige, admiration, your appearance. No, God accepts you in Christ. You accepted Christ and God accepted you. Now, follow me. And he loves you and will never reject you. He will never reject you. And your security has to be built on the fact that God accepts you. God accepts you. Maybe she didn't accept you or he didn't accept you or they don't accept you. But that doesn't matter. God accepts you. Come on, say, I am accepted by God. Come on, say that again. I am accepted by God. You're accepted by the source of all good things. You're accepted by the creator of the world, the supreme God. There's no gods beside him. And the God of the universe who owns everything except you. And that's what I had to meditate. God accepts me. God accepts me. I had some issues in my childhood where I wasn't accepted. 
but God accepts me. Had situations where, and, and even in sports, there were situations where I wasn't accepted. Had relationships in some cases where I wasn't accepted, but God accepted me. And I had to build my security on the fact that God accepted me. The second thing that you must build your security on, God's way is a rock foundation. It must come from, your security must come from knowing that God loves you. Knowing. Not that he just accepts you, but knowing that God accepts you. Beyond that, God loves you. You know it. God loves you. And and I had to meditate on that. I didn't feel loved by everybody, but God loves me. And the scripture says he changed not. So God is consistent. People can change. Things can change. They can change. Them folk can change, but God will never change. So if he loves me, it's settled. I can never walk around feeling, oh, I'm not loved. Nobody loves me. That's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from Satan. You are love. Your security comes from knowing that God loves you. Come on, say that. God loves me. Now, listen what he says in Romans 8, 38 through 39 in the New Living Translation. I want you to go back. I'm giving you these scriptures probably giving you more scriptures in this episode than I usually give, but I want you to go back. I want you to meditate. I want you to read these scriptures. I want you to read them out loud. You can read them in different translations if you want to, but listen at this. Oftentimes, I'll plug in in my cell phone. I'll Google a scripture And then when I Google the scripture, I say different translations. And then when I, 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 it comes up, it comes up with all these different translations of that verse. So you can take this and look at it from different translations. Now, Romans 8, 38 through 39 in the New Living Translation, it says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Now, notice that nothing, nothing, no matter what's happening in your life, what happened in your past, no relationship, no rejection, no hurt, no pain can separate us from God's love. Neither death, maybe somebody died. It hurts you. It disappointed you. Nor death, nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today, our words about tomorrow, not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. Think about it. The power of hell, anything that Satan brings can separate you from God's love. No power in the sky above, no power in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. It says nothing in all creation Nothing in our past, nothing in our present, nothing in our future. No person can separate us from God. In fact, nothing we do can separate us. Maybe we came up short. Maybe we didn't perform well. Maybe we didn't pass this. Maybe we weren't accepted by this. Maybe this relationship was broken off. Maybe I, you went through a divorce. The Bible's uh, divorce. The Bible says nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing. Nothing you do, nothing others do, nothing those who are tied to your relationship, they do. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. No lack of performance can separate you from God. Maybe you don't have the job. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe you don't have a lot of position. possession. That can't separate you from God's love. Maybe folk don't think much about you. Maybe you're not getting many likes. Maybe you post something and nobody follows you and nobody likes what you said. God loves you. And you have to build your security on God's love for you. And the third thing that if you're going to break the power of insecurity over your life, if you're going to overcome it, then your security must be established thirdly by agreeing with what God says about you. 
you have to agree with what God says about you. You have to agree with what God says about you. And I'm going to I'm going to give you some things that God said about you. I want to give you some scripture. Now, Proverbs 326, Proverbs 326 in the New Living Translation, it says, for the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. That's a good translation. Proverbs 326 in the New Living Translation says, for the Lord is your security. The Lord, is, if you feel insecure, you should meditate that text. Maybe you feel insecure financially. Maybe you feel insecure in your appearance. Maybe you feel insecure on the job you work. I remember uh, I had graduated from college and I was, you know, I, I, you know, I had, I had, I was struggling finding a job. And to be honest with you, I was in such a hoop dream trying to make it to the NBA that when that burst on me and I realized that I didn't mentally prepare myself for anything else. And, and man, I, you know, man, I, I was struggling mentally, had done great in school, great honor society, all that, but I was struggling. Um, and, and I, um, you know, I was just struggling. I didn't feel very good about myself. You know, I got a college degree and I'm struggling, so I felt like a failure, you know. And, and then I went to law school. I felt better about myself. And then God called me to ministry. I left law school. Then I didn't feel like anybody, you know. And then I w worked a little job. I think I was a janitor at that time, you know, because I got I'm married. I got to help take care of my family. It wasn't what I wanted, but, you know, that's what I could get at that time. And I'm a janitor, you know, and, and I, you know, I'm hiding from folk because I didn't want people to see what I was doing and all that kind of stuff. But listen at this scripture. If you're dealing with any of that stuff, any of that stuff. And I believe that I'm speaking to people. You're dealing with some of this stuff. Proverbs 23, Proverbs 326 says, for the Lord is your security. The Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Proverbs 28, 1, New King James Version says, the wicked flee when no one pursues but the righteous are bold as a lion. You got to agree with what God said. The Bible says you are bold as a lion. Uh, Luke 1, 74, in the New Living Translation, it says, we have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear. If you're a believer, you've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and you can serve God. You've been delivered from fear. You can serve God without fear. Romans 8, 7. 37, Romans 8, 37, in the New King James Version says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors, not because we got this high-paying job, not because we got this big, expensive house, not because we drive this car. No, we're not more than conquerors because of things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Philippians 4.13 it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Meditate on these. You overcome your securities as I close this episode, not by the world's way. The world's way to overcome and achieve security is by what we can do, performance, our works, by what we have, things, possessions, and what others think of us, prestige, admiration, our appearance. That's saying, don't build it off saying, remember, you're secure because God accepts you, God loves you, and God says wonderful things about you in his word. And you establish what he said. And then in John chapter 6, it says, 
that if we come to God, He'll never cast us away. He'll never cast us away. He'll never reject us. He that comes to God is accepted by God, and He'll never cast us away. Listen, this in and completes this this uh, series, Confidence, Secure or Insecure. Are you a secure uh, leader or confident leader? Listen, if you'll go back and meditate on these things, I promise you, if it hasn't already, it will break the power of insecurity over your life, and you can lead with confidence. I love you. I'm so excited about taking this journey. We're going to begin a, a new series title uh, in our ne next episode, and I look forward to seeing you then.